The whole story of Purim very much brings out the concept of exile and redemption. The Yidin, when they were in the time of Purim, in the time of Gezeda, Salman and Haman's decree, they were arguably at the lowest point in Jewish history that was ever possible. They were in a very deep exile, physically and spiritually as well. And they merited a great redemption. Now, the story of Purim doesn't only reflect the event that happened then, but it reflects the whole story of exile and redemption in general. Chassidus explains that based on highlighting the Pasuk, According to Halacha, the main miracle of Purim starts when Nachashvedish can't fall asleep at night. What is the connection between exile and redemption? So we know that Golos is compared tonight, the Gula is compared today a great light, a wonderful light, and night time is a time of darkness, of gloom. Golos is a time of darkness, of night. What happens during the night? People go to sleep. Now, sleep is a very interesting paradox. According to what this explains, when a person is asleep, he's functioning on a very minimal level. The Zaya uses the term, is only a de chayus, a small, minimal amount of life that's left in the body, the person's neshama, the person's vision, hearing, his intellect, his emotions are not functioning properly at all, if they're functioning at all. All that's really functioning is the imaginary power of the brain, which is producing dreams, and also the power of, of digestion and other lower powers of the body. The body is cleaning itself out from toxins. That's what's going on during sleep. So during sleep, a person is totally not functioning. However, sleep... Is, is, has a very important purpose, physically and spiritually. Physically, it, the body is able to clear itself out from waste and toxins. That's when the person wakes up from sleep, he's refreshed. And similarly, spiritually, it says that during sleep, the neshama, is, the neshama goes up and draws life from above. What this means in regarding the idea of exile, the gullus that the Eden were in then, and the gullus that Eden are bachlal, is that the time of exile is the time of sleep. Time of sleep means that we don't see godliness, we don't hear godliness, we're not aware of what's going on. Godliness seems not to be revealed in this world, like when someone is asleep, you don't, he's not really active, he's not really involved, and only he's only active in a very minimal way. And whatever understanding of godliness, of reality that we have, is just a kayach it's just imaginary. However, during sleep, sleep is not meant just to be a negative thing. There are very important positive effects of sleep. First of all, during the time of Golos, we have Davidus Habirudim, just like when a person sleeps, his body cleans itself out from toxins. During the time of Golos, we refine the world and make it ready for the light of Mashiach. Spiritually as well, it's explained that the time of Golos, the darkness that's in the time of Golos, is only darkness for us. It's like when a person's asleep, for the body it's a dark time, for the soul, on the contrary, it's very high, it's, it's up above, it's in its source above. Similarly, the time of Golos and the spiritual source and the level of Atmos and the level which transcends all worlds, there are these very great intense revelations that are getting ready for the future redemption. The problem is that we don't feel it down here, but the key to bringing Geula, the key to bringing redemption is not by throwing away Golos, but the key to bringing redemption is to realize that really in the time of exile itself, there's very intense lights, there's very intense godly revelations that become revealed specifically during the time of Golos. Just like when a person sleeps, it's, it's at that time specifically that his soul ascends above. But the goal is that we have to bring this great light and reveal it. We have to wake up. We can't just let the light shine above. We have to bring it down here. How do we do that? So the one, so there's two points over here. There's Avoid of Mesir Nefesh, just like the Jewish people has explained the Chassidus through the great self-sacrifice that they had during the time of Purim, that they weren't ready to give up their religion, even to save their life. That awoke the essence of the Eibishter, so to say, it caused the Eibishter to bring the miracle of Purim. But that itself is not enough. The Avoid of Mesir Nefesh is a person who's waking up, is a first step, a person who reveals his essence. But the trick of Gaul is that the essence permeates the person's the person's revealed faculties completely, that it affects his intellect, his emotions, his day-to-day -day actions. So the Avoid of Gula means to take the great light that's from the essence, which is hidden in the time of Golos, which is it's revealed above, but not down here, and to reveal it in a way that it permeates our entire being. And this is what brings Gula. By Gula we'll have the essence of Hashem will be revealed throughout the whole world in a way of Enoid Mulvadei, 
that the world will be consciously aware of the Apish in every single detail, because in every single detail of our life, of our Metzias, will become one with the Apish there. So when the Yidin, at the time of Achashvedish, they had Mesir Nefesh. Not only they had Mesir Nefesh in general, but the Mesir Nefesh permeated their day-to-day conduct. That's what brought about the redemption. Similarly, when it comes to the redemption of the true and complete redemption of Mashiach, the way we bring it is twofold, by waking up, meaning by revealing our essence, not allowing ourselves to sleep and to just go with the flow. But when we wake up, that awakening, that realization of the truth should permeate us completely, should affect our day-to-day life, it should affect the lowest parts of our interaction with this world, and that brings a true and complete redemption. May we, may we merit that it should happen, take it from Yad Mamish.